This is The Barry Richard Show. WBSM On Demand. Without further ado. Broadcasting live from the WBSM studios and streaming worldwide on the WBSM app. This is The Barry Richard Show. All viewpoints are welcome. Exercise your freedom of speech by calling 508-996-0500. Read Barry's latest articles at WBSM.com and on the WBSM app. Now, now. New Bedford's talk radio king, Barry Richard. How will you make it on your own? This world is awfully big. Girl, this time you're all alone. But it's time you started living. It's time you let someone else do some good. to say Mary Tyler Moore she made it after all and a very good afternoon Brian sitting in for Barry today told you I'd be here hope you're having a fantabulous fantabulous day yes I know we're getting the pitter patter of of raindrops and it's going to be like that throughout the uh, next 24 to 36 hours and we will hear from ABC 6 They'll let us know more at the top of the hour about what's going on outside. <clears throat> if I seem a little hoarse today, well, it's probably because yesterday I was sunning myself. Yeah, yeah. I get out into the sun every once in a while. I think there was a little arm twisting to get me to go up to Round Hill. And it's been a long time since I've been at Round Hill. Uh, basically, when I go there, it's during the off season, so maybe... You can bring a dog out to the beach and the dog can do whatever it wants, jump into the water, run without um, without worrying about people. But this was the, in fact, I think it was the, the first time that I've gone to Round Hill where there have, where there's just been a massive humanity. There were so many people at the beach yesterday and while I would have to say it was Pretty much a perfect beach day. It's not what I would typically call beach weather. To me, beach weather is it's hot, it's humid. And yesterday definitely was not that. It was in the 70s. uh, There was relatively no humidity. Just a nice day to sit out at the beach and watch the sailboats go by and, and, um, you know, do a little bathing suit watching, if you know what I mean. That's the kind of day it was. It's a really nice day. But you know, the one thing that happens, at least to me, any and every time that I go to the beach, whether or not I go into the water, and I did not yesterday, but inevitably, you get home, you have a little bite to eat, and then all of a sudden, you're tired. From relaxing at the beach, I was tuckered out. I, I, and I don't know where that term tuckered out came from, but that, that's the way I was yesterday. I was just, I was beat. We were, a uh, woman friend and I, we were watching an episode of Mosquito Coast. And I couldn't stay awake for the, for the whole thing. I don't know if I'm going to catch up on it. Maybe... Maybe the episode in and of itself wasn't all that great. I don't know. But I do know I was beat. You know, you, 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 like I say, you make a a little dinner, you, you eat. And sure, that's going to slow you down a bit. But most of the time, I don't just, you know, you know, start to snore. And I don't know that I did yesterday or not, but it was, you know, it was really lights out for me. Sometime around 7.30. It's Monday, August 7th. 
here we are. It is Assistant Dog Day. Now, I believe it's supposed to be a day that we appreciate the efforts that dogs put in to assist us. It could mean that we are assisting the dog. You know, sometimes we see those dogs with only three legs. And we put them on that cart to make them make life a little bit easier as they try to get around. I don't know. I'm just just saying. It's National Beach Party Day. Not today, at least not around here. Not too many people sitting out at the beach as the raindrops fall on their head. National Lighthouse Day. Sea Serpent. You know, here we go. Some of the stupid ones. Sea Serpent Day. Day. You you figure that one out. It's also particularly preposterous packaging day. Who thinks these up? Who has the time? Sometimes I have to say to myself, why do I bother to present them? Well, I present them because they're there and I suppose someone is celebrating this stuff somewhere. Ugh. Professional Speakers Day. To all the professional speakers like mayors and governors and folks like that, happy day to you. And it's also Purple Heart Day. Originally called the Badge of Military Merit, the Purple Heart was created by military leader George Washington in 1782. Why do I say military leader? Because at that time he wasn't president. In fact, there was no United States of America at that particular time. It was still the colonies. Seven years later, 1789, the Department of War was instituted. And put your thinking cap on for this one, would you please? What genius walks a tightrope between the two World Trade Center towers? Yeah, I know they're not there anymore. But think back to 1974 when they were there. Some dude Named Philippe Petit. Maybe it's Petet. He did it in 1974. Yeah. He was up more than 1,300 feet doing that. Can you imagine what drives a man or a woman to want to walk a tightrope I don't care how good you are. I don't care what you do in a circus. If you follow the circus, there's a big net to catch you. What compels any individual to decide that that's a goal of mine? I've always wanted to walk on a tightrope between these two towers. First of all, who are the idiots that actually put that rope, that tight rope up there in order for Felipe to do his thing. I'm not hanging out some window, you know, and then extending a rod out to the next building. I wonder how much they got paid. I wonder how much Felipe got paid to do something like that. And If somebody were to want to do something like that, obviously it wouldn't be the World Trade Center Towers. But there has to be, you know, even a couple of of high rises in Boston. I, I would say this. Never mind something that goes up near 100 stories high. What about a six or seven story building? What clown wants to do that? And if you tried to do it, what would the authorities have to say about it? Uh Uh-huh. 
probably going to lock you up in some Sing Singville. All right, let's get busy. The quote of the day from Charlie Bunger. If you don't know the name Charlie Munger, he is one of the richest men in the United States of America. He partners with Warren Buffett. Charlie Munger. The world is not driven by greed. It's driven by envy. Yeah, Charlie Munger. And well, let's talk about that for a second. The world is not driven by greed. It is driven by envy. Now, you may want to argue some of that. But as Charlie Munger explains, here we are, 2023. If you go back 200 years, so 1823, what was the landscape of the world like? We were still living on horse and buggy. There was no basic plumbing in the homes back in, in 1823. In the 1800s, let's say that, that century from the 1800s uh, into 1923, we did get indoor plumbing. We did get some of the basic needs. The automobile what was coming into existence during during that period. So so things drastically changed from 1823 to 1923. Then the next hundred years. Yes, uh, electricity was improved. And next thing you know, it's in the houses. We've got the Internet. We are all kinds of improvements. A lot of people are happy about these improvements. I know I am. But what has happened during that time period is people's basic needs have been met, yet they continuously want to live like the Joneses. Worse. Folks get upset when others have what they seemingly can't seem to get their hands on. So once again, people wanting to live like the Joneses. If you... If you scan life from the Depression era to now, during the Depression, folks had to fend for themselves. There were no credit cards to borrow off of, no television to watch. Food was hard to come by. Fast forward to where we are today, present day. Our standard of living has increased immensely. Racial, gender inequities have drastically improved. In fact, the big problem, I think most of us would agree, the big problem with poor people is that they're fat and obese compared to what folks were like back in the 1930s because not too many people had a bicycle to ride. And they certainly didn't have cars to get around. So what did they do? They walked. If they didn't have a horse, they walked. So that in and of itself kept people in shape. Yet for all of the comforts of home that the majority of us have today, folks are less happy. Do you know what I mean? Folks are complaining more about what others are getting that they themselves do not have. For instance, food stamps. The talk about student loan forgiveness, mortgage and rental deferrals. I'm going to put myself in in the category of I guess I'm less happy because Some people are getting these things. And I don't think that my tax dollars should be mortgaged out, if you don't mind me using that term, in this particular way. 
So I guess I'm one of the less happy people. Because I sit here and I sometimes say, how come these people get to have student loan forgiveness and the people of my generation had to pay off their loans? How come these folks could get student loan forgiveness and even uh, one of my sons has taken care of his loans on his own? You know, he had to pay it off like many other people. Food stamps, look, I, I, I get it. We don't want people to be starving. But at the same time, what about the waste, abuse, and fraud that goes on within that system? So I, I, I get it. I understand exactly why people are getting upset about, about stuff like this. I'm upset about some of this. But we fit into that category of things have gotten immensely better. And yet we're not necessarily all too happy as we should be. And so I, I, I bring it to you because this is where we are today, August 7th, 2023. If you just go over two years or if you only want to take it back to the Great Depression This is where we're at. This is where we exist. And you might ask, so where is this? Well, you may not know this. But this nation and us people, when I say us people, United States people, have reached a dubious all-time high. According to Yahoo Finance, United States people owe more than $1 trillion in credit card debt. $1 trillion. $1 trillion. That's $1,000 billion. Can you believe that? $1 billion in credit card debt. It's not getting any better. From last week to the week ending July 26th, that credit card debt creeped up $2 billion in one week. In one freaking week. Credit card debt went up $2 billion. Now, some folks, and I get it, I get it, I get it. Some people are going to sit back and they're going to say, Biden, the Biden administration. And and quite frankly, it is kind of easy to blame Uncle Joe for all of the misgivings that have gone on. But let me be honest with you. Credit card debt was rising during the Trump administration. What did what what slowed it down? You know what? The crisis called pandemic. Yeah. The crisis called pandemic. Folks didn't want to go on vacations. Business travel grind to a halt. Restaurants closing down. Rents and mortgage payments stopped. Student loan forgiveness happened. Stimulus checks came out. And you know what some people did with those stimulus checks? Smart move on their part. Some people paid down or paid off their credit card debt. That is what slowed The pace of credit card debt. In other words, that credit card debt may have easily gotten over $1 trillion during year one or year two of the Biden administration instead of right now. Why? It it slowed down. Like, Like I said, it slowed down. People weren't spending their money or they weren't borrowing using that credit card, using that plastic. Where will we be today? Where will we be today if the PPP loans didn't exist? Take my word for this. It's not that I'm for the PPP loans. I'm asking the question, where would we be? Where would this nation be if the government, governments, didn't get involved 
with PPP loans. Where would you be? How much money would you be out? 2000 plus bucks if you didn't get stimulus checks. Some folks got extended unemployment. The loan, the mortgage, and rent forgiveness. This nation would be in deeper doo-doo than we're in right now. And why do I say deeper doo-doo? Because I, for one, feel that this nation is in a recession. And depending on who you are, that recession could be the big capital D, as in depression. Depression. I'm willing to say things have have stagnated. Sure, Uh, the Biden administration is jumping up and down. They're uh, talking about 187,000 jobs created during the month of July. Well, let me look right here because I've got my paperwork. I'm also in tune to the Labor Department each and every week. Each and every week. And the initial jobless claims were the week that ended a week ago Saturday. A week ago Saturday, so July 29th, was... 227,000 for one week, 227,000. And the Biden administration wants you to think everything is getting better because they somehow created 187,000 jobs. You can do the math. I can do the math. There's 40,000 difference. 40,000 more people filing an initial unemployment claim <laughs> than, than the number of people for the entire month that got a job. And you want me to take it one more uh, week prior to that? The unrevised number from the previous week of people filing an initial unemployment claim was 221,000. So them's the numbers. Things were going down, and now things are going back up again. So, again, today's date, August 7th, 2023. Are things really rosy? I I ask again, where would the nation be without the loan, mortgage, and rental forgiveness, without the stimulus checks, without the added unemployment Without PPP loans and the, and the new things that are out now called the ERTCs, where the heck would we be? Okay, enough of my jibber, enough of my jabber. Let's hear from you. 508-996-0500. Hello, you are first up. Hi. 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 One little uh, thing. Uh, it's not very little. During the covert, for instance, I'll... The unemployment office over over in California lost twenty billion dollars. They don't even know where it went. <laughs> they lost twenty billion bucks. Yes. How do you do that? Yeah, that's that's what I'm asking. Yeah, how do you how do you lose twenty billion dollars? And that's among that's not even counting all the other money they lost. Like we were talking the PPE lo- loans and all that other stuff. A lot of that was on a scam. A lot of those people got money and just left. Left the country, left, and it just, poof, disappeared. Really? I'll leave you with I, that. I, I do a lot of stuff with California, and that, that's a new one on me. I'm, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying, twenty. how do you lose $20 billion? No, a thousand how does it get siphoned billion. out of a bank? How does, not, how, how does the computer not know? <laughs> People are scamming. It's every day out there. It's disgusting. And it, if you look it up online, you'll see. And it's just absolutely deplorable. The whole thing. You're talking about the way the economy and this and that. And we got rated from AAA to AA, the whoever um, rates the country as far as what the credit. Yeah, the credit uh, rating. Yeah, I heard that. Double, yeah, double plus. I, you know, I guess I don't understand it all. Double plus, yeah. triple plus, and then uh, what's the one above it? But we have gone down two credit rating positions over the past two and a half years. 
and that's only happened maybe twice out of the whole uh, since the inception of this starting or whatever. I don't mm. know. I don't know a lot about that either. But anyway, we'll see what others have to say. Nice having you on board. Thank you much. I appreciate the call. We continue. Brian in for Barry today. Hello. Are you winging and you wanging? Or what? I am winging and I am wanging. Well, I'm glad to hear it as long as you're by yourself doing it. <laughs> anyway, Listen, man, I'm not um, a closet winger wanger. Well, you know, it's all in the definition. <laughs> um, so, yeah, this is an interesting topic for me because I think that if the U.S. government decided to not offer PPP loans and not offer stimulus checks for everybody in the United States that's working, and so what, what would be the alternative? So you're you're saying two people, ha- or sorry, people have to be out of work for two months. That's where it all started. And all of these paychecks are supposed to cover that which there was a ton of fraud on the PPP side. It's so massive that I can't even begin to describe it because they they haven't even wrapped their hands around all the people that just, I mean, I know there was someone in New Bedford that got busted for it when it was going on, but there were so many people that just said, oh, I got a business. My aunt work, you know, works for me, so I'm going to put a PPP loan in for, you know, 100000 or whatever. I just think that what would have happened is if, if we didn't, didn't offer anything, um, and people would have to find ways to work through the company they were in. Split shifts, three shifts, offices, uh, instead of going nine to five, now they're on a three-shift office with, uh, you know, limited contact. And I think that we'd all would have been fine. That's my take on it. I think this was a, jo- you know, give, you know, um, give, give uh, the government the opportunity to create more bureaucracy and more dependency, and they're going to take it every time. Um, and, and I so agree was, with you, but let, let's face it, we have, we have to look at it from the standpoint that a lot of people were out of work because of the, because of the p- pandemic. And they were out of work, well, were, okay, and, but the, but and, and all no. that time they would not have been able... Uh, they wouldn't have had any money coming in. And then uh, they different. would have been wait. kicked out of their house. They would have lo- uh, lost their mortgage. Uh, well, wait, wait. When the government said everybody stay home, then you were, they were then obligated to pay for everybody. If you're talking about people that became sick, that's a different situation. No, I, 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 you, you see, I, I, I'm, I'm in the category that the government should not have gone down the road that they went. And I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I don't think that... Uh, that they had the, the right to then turn around and use our tax dollars because people were at home. So I think that they built the whole thing up just as you were saying before. But the fact of the matter is, if that money didn't come out, what would have happened to the people? They would have been screwed. I mean, folks are screwed the way it is, but it would, the screwing would have happened earlier. And a lot of that happened during the tail end of the Trump administration. But I guess the thing is, the question is, is wh- wh- why would they have been screwed? It was the government that required people to stay home um, that forced the issue of having to to do the payment. Um, uh, so it all depends on how it's handled. If it, it could have been, I mean, there were a lot less people who stayed home uh, in South Dakota, as an example. I, I can't get into all the numbers, and I know I've looked them all up, and there were other states. I know uh, Florida, for instance, had um, many more people, you know, retain, you know, retain their businesses, stay at work. I was, I'm in the bicycle business, and what 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 all the dealers did around the country, and the, let me just tell you, there were more bicycles sold during 2021 than in May, two years prior combined. That's how many, that's how much of a demand the bike business went up because people didn't want to stay in their houses, so to do something safe. They got kayaks and bikes and got out. And so the bike sales were out of control, but the bike dealers stayed open because they were designated a transportation support service. And then people would drop bikes at the dealership, phone the dealer while they're standing in the parking lot. And then the dealer would come out and pick up the bike and, and they would call in the service they needed to do, change the tire, or whatever they needed to do. So the bike industry stayed alive through the whole thing and actually flourished the entire year afterward. So why can't everybody, you know, why couldn't that happen in other scenarios? Um, or how can you, you know, if you have to figure out other scenarios to keep people away from each other and continue on, um, and maybe that maybe we'd be looking at 10% of the PPPs or 5% where it was really necessary, where you couldn't do anything else, food preparation or whatever, I don't know. But I think what you just said is the government just, you know, wrote a blank check and said, oh, you know, 
here's what we're going to do. And <laughs> that was it. So, And that was it. Hey, thanks for the call. I yep. do appreciate it. 508-996-0500. That's how you get on the program today. Brian in for Barry. What would I do with the extra money if the meds were lower? Probably pay for the gasoline, which is up seven cents a gallon from last week at this time. Thanks for letting me know that, AAA. Hello. Hey, what's going on? Winging. Winging and winging. Yep. I hear you. So, you you really started off this uh, this show with a lot of different different information, different topics, and I was like trying to figure out which one I wanted to kind of opine on and have a discussion with you uh, on first. Um, in regards to like envy, right? The Bob Munger comment, uh, yes. the quote. That really it, that intrigued me because I it started, you know, get my mind going. And you can go two ways with envy. You can either say, "I'm going to be innovative. I'm going to I'm going to start a start a business or create a product in order for me to get a hold of what that millionaire has. I want what that millionaire has through product innovation, through business, you know, entrepreneurship." Then there's the other avenue where you're envious and jealous, where you end up becoming more of a communist and you want to take him down a notch and disperse the wealth amongst everybody. So that's where envy can kind of be a two-edged sword. You can either go one way or the other, left or right. So you do don't, you you don't, you don't see uh, uh, the edge where people don't necessarily want government interference, but they're jealous of the other people that have something that they don't have and they don't know exactly how to go about and getting getting it themselves. Right. So so you have one one edge of the sword that says we're gonna use government to bring it, that use the envy uh, and bring that upper echelon down a notch, or you have the other side which is, you know, I'm gonna do what I can to to be part of that that group, I want to be. I'm envious, but I'm not going to bring him down. I want to. I want to climb up to where he's at, and 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 I think in that aspect, you know, that's how you have a growing economy and how you build entrepreneurship and and create innovation in um, in the economy and and improve our our standard of living overall. Oh, I won't argue that at all. I think you're absolutely you know, correct. Yeah, I, it is a I matter of NBA what, is, but it's yeah. where where are we today, 2023, and it seems that we have a lot of people that are just mad, mad about you right. know you whether it's government doing it, other people getting it, uh, mad about the situation dealing with the border, mad about what's going on overseas. You know, people are just mad about whatever, even though their stock in life has improved. And I think a lot of times, I, I hear this on the left and I hear it on the right, uh, everybody wants somebody else to blame but themselves, right? So we have, on, on the left, everybody blames the millionaire. We've got the millionaire's tax. We got the reason why I'm, I'm uh, you know, struggling is because my boss doesn't pay me enough. You know, rather than improving my, the value of my labor, I just want more money because I want more money. And then you have on the right, everybody blames the government, right? Everything's the government fault. You know, you're, you're, you're in debt, you know, beyond measure because, you know, of the government. You know, the government took too much taxes, but then you complain that your road isn't fixed. So it is that, that's the issue. I think there's, there's two extremes where everybody wants to blame somebody else rather than taking personal responsibility. I got you on and, that, man. You know, I, I, you, hit, you hit it. That is it. You that is it. Like, and, and in regards to whether or not we're we're in a recession, a lot of your leading business businesses, a lot of your leading investment firms have pushed off their recession call from 2023 into early 2024. So you're not going to see a recession in 2023. Uh, you got you might see a small, shallow recession in 2024. And we have to remember, you know, a lot of people on the left and right again. With, with political power to gain, they use recessions as, as a scare tactic when if you really pay attention to the markets and business, we understand that it's part of the natural cycle of business. So a recession naturally gets away, gets rid of the excesses in our in our economy. You you get a lot of your drawdowns on your inventory, which makes things cheaper, et cetera, et cetera. 
So as long as it's a shallow recession, uh, it's not a bad thing. It actually uh, eliminates and softens your inflation and, and kind of evens the playing field and, and the excess uh, that was created during your pandemic. You had a lot of excess capital in all right, man, I got, I got to let you go. I'm just running up against the clock. I appreciate you calling you and certainly your comments. We have our number two coming up in just a bit. Brian in today for Barry. <laughs> Give him the cheese. Well, huh. ABC News at the top of the hour and then after ABC.